Hey everyone, Robert here, author of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life. Are you ready to start living? Are you ready and willing to transform yourself and your life from ordinary to extraordinary? Welcome, my friends, to the fully engaged life. Welcome back to the show, everyone. I certainly hope all of you have enjoyed the autumn season as much as I have. I have to say that there's nothing better than having a cool evening, even a damp, rainy day, especially since we don't get that many out here in California, and having the ability to put a nice fire in the fireplace curl up on the sofa with my beautiful wife, covered up in a warm, cozy blanket with just a little nip of bourbon and some soft music. Now, that's the way to spend an evening. Sounds incredible, doesn't it? I know it does to me, and I am so blessed that I get to experience that. And as this show is about living a fully engaged life, any of you in a relationship, if you haven't engaged in something like that, maybe give it a shot. See what you think. We just cozy up on the couch together and relax. And we talk and truly enjoy one another's company as we remain present in each moment of the here and now. It's really a wonderful form of practice and perhaps one of my absolute favorite ways to spend an evening. Once you attain a certain state of mindfulness, then things like this, even simple things, become a tremendous opportunity for consistent practice. And as autumn shifts into the holiday seasons and the weather is going to get colder depending upon where you live... It's a wonderful opportunity for you to experience this same type of practice. To put yourself in such an incredibly comfortable environment and then to mindfully hold a state of high vibration with your heart completely open and such a deep state of love, appreciation, and joy. You cannot help but to touch your own divinity. So as we wrap up the year 2017, I would leave you with that particular practice. The point of this episode, however, is not upon 2017. It is upon 2018, the upcoming year. What I am terming the year of unity. This is bound to be a year of human harmony. But in order for this to take place, we all must participate. But I truly feel the energy moving in this way. I feel this shift. I feel the consciousness shift moving in this direction. I think we've all experienced enough fear and hatred and violence and mental illness And I feel that we're all ready for a break. We're ready for something better. And it's up to each one of us to move things in this direction and follow the natural energy of this consciousness shift. And this shift is going to be building even more momentum in the coming year. And as I've been sharing with all of you, it's time to get on board or be left behind. It was very interesting because there were several points throughout 2017 where I had people explaining to me 
that they were lying awake at night in fear of our nation going to war. Some of these people were actually crippled by this fear, and they were unable to function normally in life. It's time for the U.S. to stop all of the warmongering and allow the old paradigm of being a military-industrial complex to fade away. It's time to give up, to let go of everyone living in fear here and causing fear in other countries where we have no business being in the first place. It's time to shift from corruption and competition and cultivate a culture based upon compassion and cooperation. And I mean that locally as well as internationally. I feel that this consciousness shift will continue to strengthen in 2018 and every single one of us can do our part to make sure that it not only happens, but it picks up the momentum that it so richly deserves in order to propel us into a better, more peaceful, harmonious future. I would like to focus upon this new improved culture of human harmony in upcoming episodes, as well as sharing specific practices and teachings that support this ideal of unity and human harmony. I do not intend this to become more pointless fluff, but instead offer everyone a real path to follow in their own way to attain inner harmony with themselves so that they may then achieve this same harmony with everyone else around them. We first must strive for our own sense of personal unity of body, mind, and spirit, and only then can we truly share with the world. Only then will we have something of value and authenticity to give to the world. Once this sense of personal harmony of body, mind, and spirit has been achieved, then we will begin to shine that light outward and we will develop a sense of unity with our community, our country, and the world. Now, I'm going to insert a little disclaimer here at this point, so please bear with me. Because the establishment, the darker side of the government and its agenda, creating this twisted logic, this inverted sense of reality of which I've mentioned before, I want to help you understand that they have done the same to this ideal of unity. So I am not speaking of this establishment created, twisted, inverted logic type of unity that they are using to manipulate the minds of so many. When I speak of unity and human harmony, I'm not referring to the same inverted unity that these silly social justice warriors preach from a point of brainwashed entitlement When I speak of unity and human harmony, I'm referring to the true nature of those terms. With no political agenda attached, with no ego-driven agenda attached, but instead, what I'm referring to is to help each individual to open their own heart. How can we have an honest connection with another human being when our own hearts are shut down and boarded over? We cannot. We cannot. When I speak of unity and human harmony, I'm talking about taking those chains off of our heart, allowing the gateway of our heart to open wide and for us to once again connect to one another on a deep and meaningful level. That's what I'm referring to. This is what's meant by true and rational unity, a unity that carries a sense of personal responsibility and respect 
to allow the differences of others as long as they abide by the governing laws and do not inflict harm upon others or tread on the civil rights of others. When I refer to unity and human harmony, I'm talking about a very mindful idea. I'm talking about something that requires something real. This helps us get back to a state that human beings once had naturally, a state that we have been systematically led away from, and now we're being led to believe it never even existed. But it did, and it can again. Developing a true sense of unity does not include resistance. And it requires a great degree of strength to accomplish within ourselves as well as with one another. And in this way, we can abandon the twisted, ineffective method of the so-called social justice warrior and give rise to the spiritual warrior. Because we will need this spiritual strength to attain the sense of unity with one another. We have to be strong this way. We have to reestablish our sense of true power, not this fake power that's being perpetuated by the ego. It's easy to see the difference, isn't it? It's easy to see that one of, of the senses of unity that is governed by twisted, inverted logic is nothing more than a, a pacifier for the ego. Well, the other sense of unity, through opening our hearts and truly connecting and communicating with one another, it's not based upon ego at all. It's based on essence. It's based on love mutual respect and appreciation, and it will result in a sense of joy within you, within them, and within your community. This is the direction humanity must go. As usual, I try to provide examples from my own personal direct experiences with these things. So I would ask you to bear with me again one more time as I explain something about this sense of unity and connection to another. When I was younger and totally dominated by the ego-driven mind, I found it challenging to even share my appreciation with people. I could say thanks, but there really wasn't anything behind it. And I found times where I really couldn't even bring myself to tell someone thank you for something. Can you imagine that? And after going through these practices, I had a tremendous shift, a tremendous awakening. And now, as my wonderful wife can attest, I go out of my way to share appreciation with people I don't know and will probably never know and probably never even see again. But I just feel moved to do the right thing. And to me, that right thing is to selflessly, mindfully share my sincere appreciation for whatever service that person had provided, or even if it was just a brief conversation with someone that I just met. I always share my sense of appreciation and a smile and it comes directly from my heart. There's no obligation attached to this. It isn't something I do in order to practice. It's just the way I am. What a change, huh? I can't tell you how much better it feels to be this way. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And my only agenda here is to help those of you who want to undergo such changes in yourself to do so. I did it. It worked for me. If it worked for me, it can work for you. And I'd like to show you how to do that. Everything begins from within. If we desire to bring about real change in the world, we must first be the change we desire. We have to become that which we wish to bring about into reality. When we ourselves are living examples of that which we desire to share 
for the betterment of all, then our light can truly shine. Until such a time as we've attained this for ourselves, we cannot truly hope to birth it into reality. Creating a better world cannot be accomplished through more programs, regulations, or even book topics. At least not until those presenting such ideas can actually act as authentic living examples for others. I have an extensive background in martial arts, so I will share an example of what I'm talking about through that perspective. In martial arts, a master instructor's title is usually referred to with the word shihan. Shihan is often just translated as master teacher, and it's usually awarded as a high level of achievement, sometimes honorifically. However, shihan actually means to be a model example, to be a living example. When I attained that title, I did not take it lightly. Not then, not now. And while I am certainly far from perfect, I do my best to be a living example for all of those who interact with me. Whether you're a martial arts master instructor or not is irrelevant. We must all attain this elevated spiritual level of being the example for ourselves. Through our own direct personal experience, before we can ever truly be effective in elevating others. This requires us to walk the path for ourselves and achieve real, lasting results through our own personal experiences before we can ever even imagine guiding others to doing the same. We can no longer be content with talking the talk. Now is a time where each one of us has to actually walk the walk. So then the question is, how can we accomplish this? By first developing a sense of unity, of harmony between our own body, mind, and spirit. This is the first step. This is the core of the challenges or practices in my book, Expansion Mastery. This is their purpose, to help you elevate and unify your body, mind, and spirit. The three aspects of yourself in this physical life into one cohesive, harmonious state of being. Expansion Mastery is presented in three sections. That of heaven, earth, and being. Or looked at another way, body, mind, and spirit. It's through the development of each of these in its own way that we then become capable of uniting these three aspects of self as we enjoy the adventure of a mental, physical experience. And yes, we know that The body and the mind are not our true self. But in order to engage, fully engage this experience of living in time, space, and matter, having a mental and physical experience, part of that and part of true spirituality is not ignoring the mind and body, but mastering them and unifying them with our true sense of self, our spirit, our soul, whatever you want to call it. In order to bring all three of these aspects into harmony, this is when we are at our most powerful as a human being. So if you don't have a copy of Expansion Mastery, the Practical Guide to Living a Fully Engaged Life yet, what are you waiting for? You need to get that. You need to get it now. You need to dig into it. I wrote it so it's very easy to read. And the practices are extremely easy to follow. And I give you three different examples to give you a more total understanding for the experience. So you can have a complete guide this way. And if you ever have any questions, all you have to do is shoot me an email. I'm happy to help you through any of them. 
but you need to start at the beginning and work your way through some of these challenges. They will provide you with the core that we need, and then from there you can add other things to it or change the practice however you like, but you have to start somewhere. And I recommend not changing these practices too much in the beginning. Try to keep them on point because I've already taken out all of the dogma, all of the mysticism, while providing you with everything you need to attain the success you seek. So my recommendation for practice is this. I recommend a daily practice. Now, don't let that intimidate you. It doesn't have to be a big commitment. It's just something you need to get in the habit of doing daily. This is easy. Just engage one of the challenges in my book and work with it each day for whatever amount of time that you have or that you choose to put forth for the success of your own sense of self-unity. Just take a challenge, just one, and work with it for a week or two weeks. And just do it every day for a few minutes. If it's feeling good, you're enjoying it, you want to go longer, do it as long as you like. If there are any time recommendations or restrictions to any of the practices, I've included them in my book. So take the knowledge you've acquired through reading and actually do something with it. This is called living. Remember the spiritual formula that I've shared with you. Acquire the knowledge, then put that knowledge into action. That equates to experience. And from that, what results is true wisdom. Success with the practice. And since I just happen to have a copy right here, Handy of Expansion Mastery. If we look in the first section, which is the heaven section, under challenges, the first challenge that I offer you is entitled Night Sky Observation Standing Silver Strand Posture. This is the idea. The first part of this is to simply make the time every night to go outside and look up at the stars. As you do this, observe the thoughts that run through your mind. Do not attempt to affect them, but simply observe them without judgment. This will help you to begin reclaiming control of how you use your time, as well as how to develop the willpower to participate in practices that facilitate change in your life. It will also help you to slow down, relax, and begin to calm your mind, decompressing from the stresses of the day, which will result in better sleep at night. The next part of this exercise engages the use of your body posture so that you can connect to the heaven and earth. With the emphasis primarily placed upon the connection to heaven, this is the silver strand exercise. This posture and exercise is very powerful, having the ability to raise your vibration. The first thing I will address with this posture is that it's about standing up. We sit far too much and it's terrible for us. Simply standing up has a tremendous health benefit over sitting. And standing with correct posture multiplies those benefits. This is a very old exercise. Sometimes it's referred to as the silver strand or the golden cord or the golden cord of Kuan Yin or you you have it. But like I said, I've removed any of the dogma. But this is very easy. You're just going to stand and you're going to perform a visualization underneath the stars. I mean, that doesn't sound too bad, does it? I mean, imagine if every evening you just step out onto your deck or your patio or in your yard And you just take a moment to relax, exhale, look up at the stars, get to know the sky again, reconnect to nature, stop looking at the screen on your cell phone and your tablet and your computer and your TV and look at something truly spectacular. Reconnect to the forces of nature, reconnect to the heavens themselves. And then stand in good posture, not slouching like you do on the sofa, Not with your neck craned down as you're staring at your cell phone screen and walking around. We're correcting that by looking upward. (laughs) And then you're going to stand looking straight forward. 
and you're going to envision the strand going through the center of your body and lifting you up a little bit, raising you up a little bit. It's incredible. You'll feel lighter on your feet. You'll feel healthier. You'll feel much more clear-headed. This is a type of practice, and all it takes is a few moments every evening. In the beginning, it might take a little bit longer because you're getting used to the practice, but that's why we do it consistently so that the practice itself becomes comfortable, and as you become more comfortable, you can do it easily and quickly. And this is how we begin to create this sense of self-unity, of human harmony within our own self. I give you a way in there, too, about how to open the heart, truly open the heart, because there's so much absolute useless fluff out there regarding opening the heart. So many people say, oh, just touch it and smile and what. No, it takes more than that to truly open the heart. So I give you an exercise that will help you to actually attain what I'm talking about. No more delusion, just authentic results and your ability to begin attaining a sense of personal unity. Remember, we have to have a sense of unity within ourselves before we can start to share it with others in the world. I would have never thought to have started to teach this material until I have attained it for myself because it's not being authentic to me, and it's just my opinion here, but it feels fraudulent. I would feel fraudulent if I hadn't gone through it all and attained the success for myself. Because it's only from that standpoint, having put in the time, put in the effort, put in the money, put in the sweat, blood, and tears that have allowed me to go through it myself and understand how best to share it with others. And when you create this sense of unity for yourself, then you can begin to share this sense of unity with others around you. And you will be able to start offering real positive energy to the world. Make a real difference in your own life as well as the lives around you. And it is not selfish to begin with yourself. This is where everything has to begin. Again, more inverted reality. A lot of people like to say, oh, you got to start out and work your way in. It doesn't work that way. What are you sharing with people if you haven't attained it yourself? So this is the actual path, the no-nonsense approach that is offering you a practical path to follow. First, we are going to attain a sense of unity of self, of our own mind, body, and spirit. And then we can begin to affect change, creating a sense of unity in our community, our country, and the world. In the next episode, I will cover what it is to create a sense of unity in your community. As usual, I'm going to lay the entire path out for you so you can see where it's going. There's no surprises. Total transparency. You'll understand what you need to do and be able to determine if you're being successful in your efforts. And as always, my friends, you can visit me at www.expansionmastery.com. Of course, you can get your autographed copy of Expansion Mastery, the practical guide to living a fully engaged life there. Otherwise, it's available on any bookseller online. You can find it in some stores. Uh, Barnes & Nobles online has it. And of course, Amazon has it. And you can get it in digital format, anything you like. Get a copy, read it, and then put it into action. For the book is indeed a very practical guide to living a fully engaged life. In order for us to live a fully engaged life, we have to be fully engaged, and that means being unified to have a sense of harmony of our self, our mind, our body, our spirit. Also, make sure to connect with me on Facebook, Twitter, and other social media platforms. I'll also be making a very, very extensive list, including the episodes of The Fully Engaged Life, to my YouTube channel, so you'll be able to access all of that there, as well as one to two minute long insightful videos and special offers. So make sure and 
follow me on all of these things. Make sure and subscribe. It helps. And I'd greatly appreciate your assistance. Together, we can push this consciousness shift forward. We can move to a true sense of unity and human harmony as the entire population awakens. As always, I wish you the very best in all of your practices and your life, my friends. Take care.